Hey everyone, uh, this is Jake Bivens. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have a really exciting webinar planned today on X Factor and X Factor Stretch. So for those of you um, that own a system, and even if you don't yet, uh, you know, you may already know the importance of X Factor in a player's swing. So we'll, we'll dive into, you know, some of the ways that we can analyze and train this, this super important metric. But before we get into kind of the agenda of what we'll talk about today, uh, if you have any questions throughout, please type them into the Q&A tab on Zoom. Um, should be at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we'll try to get them during the webinar, either uh, we'll read them out loud or we'll just answer them in the Q&A chat. Uh, I want to introduce Logan Maloney, who is joining us today. So thanks for being on, Logan. Hey, appreciate it, Jake. Good to be here. Uh, really excited for this webinar. Like Jake said, uh, I'll be answering our Q&A on the side, either in the chat or, you know, we'll throw it out there to Jake and, and uh, get it answered for you guys. So, so really excited. Feel free to ask anything at any time. Awesome. Cool. So let's get into it. So first, uh, we'll go over the agenda of what we're covering today. Um, we're going to look at what is X Factor, uh, tighter versus lo looser movers, um, how their X Factor will change, um, X Factor contact, reading the X Factor performance graph, um, training X Factor in biofeedback, and we'll look at a few uh, additional drills that uh, can affect this metric as well. So first, we'll start off with what is X Factor. Um, so there's actually a difference between X factor and X factor stretch. Um, kind of a confusing thing that, you know, a lot of us kind of uh, miss when we're looking at this metric. So X factor is the amount of separation created between hips and shoulders throughout any point in the swing. So when you see this represented as a negative number, um, that's telling us that the torso is more internally rotated than the pelvis at that point. Um, so we're just kind of tracking throughout the whole swing, the separation that the pelvis and torso are creating. Um, and that's X factor. X factor stretch is the amount of X factor gained from heel strike to first move. So stretch is actually only in that short period of time um, when the players heel strikes to when they get to first move. And we're just trying to see how much separation they're creating between those two points. So, Kind of a small difference there between X factor and X factor stretch, um, but, but both super important. So if you do own a system or you're thinking about, uh, you know, owning a system, where can you see the X factor um, in the software? Uh, there's three places that we can start to analyze X factor um, in the K baseball software. The first being uh, the baseball summer report. So at the bottom of the PDF baseball summer report, uh, we can look at X factor at heel strike, um, first move and contact, which are all um, incredibly important when we're looking at the swing. And you can also get kind of our pro ranges. So again, this is a pretty broad range just because X factor is kind of a broad metric that a lot of players kind of vary across the board at. So you can see, um, you know, if the player um, or the player that you're working with falls out of that green range and if they're really creating way too much X factor or not enough at all. Again, X factor stretch, we can look there to see between heel strike and first move, um, how much X factor is being created. So the baseball summary report is the first place to look at this. And again, that's just a snapshot in time. Um, it gives you a really good indication of, of you know, the X factor of the players creating. Second is the performance graph. Um, so the performance graph is great and we'll dive into this a little bit later, but that's giving us a great indication of when the X factor is occurring. Um, and again, how much, how much the player is creating. So the X factor performance graph is the, you know, the best way to view this information, but it's also a little tricky. Um, and that's why we'll go over that today because it's so important. So the performance graph um, is the next way. And then finally, uh, we have tiles. And this is, a, again, another great way in the cage to track a player's X factor. Um, if you're the coach and you're working live time with a player and you want to see, you know, whether 
they're creating more or less X factor based on the training you've been doing, or you're doing a drill and you want to see, you know, does this force the player to create some more X factor? Um, and this is kind of uh, just a really great way to view this in live time. And we'll get into this a little bit, but we do want to, you know, understand the player's mobility as we do with a lot of these metrics. Um, so we can understand if they're capable of creating some more X factor or if they're really right in range for what their body allows them to do. So again, the three places we can see X factor in the K baseball software, the baseball summer report, the performance graph and tiles. And we're going to throw up a quick poll question here. Um, just to uh, review some of that information. So I launched a poll. So the question is, where can we see X factor in the K baseball software? Uh, the answer is being X factor performance graph, baseball summary report, efficiency report, and tiles. So I'll give uh, everyone a few seconds to answer that one. And as the votes are coming in, uh, I think we'll notice that there are a few right answers here. So um, we'll cover those in about 10 seconds. Cool. So most of the answers are in. Um, what we're seeing here is where can we find it just as we covered the performance graph, the baseball summary report and tiles are all correct answers here. Uh, the efficiency report doesn't show X factor um, that shows, you know, the kinematic sequence, uh, speed gains, uh, kinematic speeds. Um, so those uh, A, B and D are the correct answers here. So it looks like most everybody answered that correctly. Cool. So the next thing we'll look at uh, is incredibly important for this metric um, and it's tighter versus looser movers. So on the left side of the screen here, you can see we have uh, the profile of a tighter mover, a known tighter mover. Uh, so mobility screen has been done and um, you know, we found out that this player is a tighter mover and you can start to see that in their, in their numbers. Um, only creating around nine degrees of X factor at heel strike 12 degrees at first move and one degree of contact. And we'll get into, you know, being synced up at contact a little bit later. But the first thing you notice is this player is relatively in that, you know, negative 10 degrees of um, X factor, which for their mobility um, is, is good because we know they're a tighter mover. Um, and then on the right side of the screen here, we have the uh, looser mover profile. So we can see that they're creating a lot uh, larger numbers in terms of X factor. So we have heel strike at negative 20, uh, first move at negative 39, which is really at the top end of this range, and then uh, contact at negative 13. So again, we understand that this player is, um, you know, extremely mobile, and that's why we're okay with this negative 39 degree number. Um, you know, they do this consistently and they've kind of proven that they can, you know, keep the mobility and keep the functional strength to create these, these excessive numbers. So we're okay with that. But these are just two extremes of what we can see uh, with tighter and looser movers. And it's another reason why we can't kind of put everybody into the same bucket when it comes to this metric, um, which is super important uh, because, you know, we don't want to have a tighter mover um, in the cage and we're trying to, you know, make them create 40 degree, negative 40 degrees of, of X factor first move. So that's what we really need to start to understand. And you'll also be able to see this in the performance graph. So we can see here that this is a really efficient performance graph or X factor performance graph. Um, and with tighter movers, you're going to see less of a dip, um, ideally around first move. This is more of a profile of a looser mover with this uh, graph we're looking at here um, because they do create about 
35 degrees of, of X factor. Um, but the grass will look similar in shape, but the tighter mover will just be a lot uh, shorter or smaller of a dip. Um, so two profiles here. Um, and then you also have players that fall everywhere in between these two. Um, and even maybe outside of a few of these ranges. But we do want to see, you know, even with the tightest of movers, we want to see some type of X factor around first move. Um, so, so just a very important number. Um, Logan, if you want to add anything to that or just any observations that you've seen kind of working with all the players that you have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, I want to throw – there's a question out there for you. So do you yeah. have anything kind of when you go through your flow, what are some numbers that, that you look for? Uh, is there something ideal that you've seen? You know, maybe we don't have it marked, but something maybe personally you've seen as, as a coach of what you consider an ideal range for a player. Yeah, and that's kind of just going off what we were just talking about. Um, you know, it's hard to pinpoint for this metric specifically an ideal number. Um, that we want every player to get to just because the mobility is going to be um, pretty dependent here. Like I said, we do want to be, you know, somewhat negative with this, um, with this number at first move. So if it is an extremely tight mover, you know, maybe we're just shooting for negative five for that player. Um, if it is a mobile player and we know that they can, you know, keep their swing controlled and um, they've got the mobility in the correct areas, maybe we do want to create some more X factor at first move just because that can translate to power. Um, and, you know, if you have a super mobile player that's only creating negative three degrees of, of X factor, that's something you're going to want to work on because it could cause power um, output deficiency. It could cause sequencing issues. Um, so again, it's hard to put a, an exact number on it as far as a range. Um, you know, we could start to dive into looser mover range and tighter mover range and neutral range. Um, but again, that's just a really case by case basis there. No doubt. And I think you, you hit the, the nail on the head uh, with that question. You know, I think the only thing that I would throw in here would be kind of looking at our contact metric. Uh, you know, the big thing that we see is even loose movers will get to a uh, closer range when they make contact. So what I mean by that is instead of that, you know, one degree and 13 degrees, we're going to see them at least within 10 degrees at contact. Uh, and then with loose movers as well, you know, we, we tend to see sometimes that could mean a lack of control for a younger player. They're loose, but they don't really know how to control that yet. So they might need some quieter movements, you know, put into their swing. So it really helps you just understand who you're working with and, and how they move uh, to make you a better coach, really. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. Um, you know, if you if you don't do the mobility screen with the player, this could be an important metric to, like Logan just mentioned, help you understand how the player is moving and this kind of separation that they're creating. Um, again, you'd want to do the screen to confirm that, but just a really good metric to see, you know, this player is capable of creating negative 40 degrees of separation. Uh, maybe we tap into that and uh, really use that to our advantage. So, uh, Great point there. So we're going to throw up another poll here. Um, this one is looser movers will tend to um, create less X factor stretch than tighter movers around first move, create more X factor than tighter movers around first move, create zero X factor stretch throughout the swing um, or all of the above. Give everybody about 10 to 15 more seconds to answer this one. And again, we've had a few questions, but if you do have questions that come up, make sure to throw them in the Q and A um, and we'll make sure to get to those. So Jay, kind of while they're going through this, there's a good question that, that popped up. Um, I have two players that come to mind. I'd love to see if you have something different. Um, but as Chris asked is, you know, is there some big league hitters that, you know, they might be able to see what that looks like, you know, of a tight mover versus a loose mover uh, and maybe kind of why the 3D plays a huge part in that because maybe to the naked eye, you don't see that separation as much. Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, the two that kind of come to mind or a few that come to mind really would be 
um, kind of the difference between a, a Mike Trout and a Mookie Betts. Um, so I think it's pretty um, visible when we're watching those two players swing, the different um, kind of X factor and separation that they're creating. Um, you know, we'd love to, to really dive into their 3D data, but I'd imagine that, you know, Mike Trout's not creating a ton of X factor stretch, um, but he's super efficient in his patterns and he's kind of separating and coming back together extremely quickly. Um, whereas Mookie Betts is creating this massive torque and separation in his body. Um, and then he's able to control that and come back together quickly. So those are the first two that come to mind there um, would be, you know, the tighter versus looser mover. Um, and there's a few other um, players. I'm sure Bryce Harper uh, probably falls into the looser mover category. Um, and, you know, some of those bigger sluggers uh, that kind of model that more tri Mike Trout type swing um, fall on the other side of that spectrum. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and end this poll. So the correct answer here was uh, looser movers will tend to create more X factor than tighter movers around first move. So most everybody answered that one correctly. So we will keep moving forward here. So X factor contact, um, we touched on it briefly, but it, you know, super important to understand, you know, the player may be creating a ton of X factor at first move, but are they bringing it back together at contact? Um, so you can see on the, on the left side of the screen here, uh, this player gets within one degree of pelvis and torso synced up at contact. And that's, you know, what we're looking for. With really elite hitters, we're gonna, you know, tighten that range. We wanna be within five degrees. Um, youth players and, and developing players, maybe it's more uh, 10 degrees at contact that we're looking for. But if we continue to work towards, you know, pelvis and torso sinking up at contact, um, that's going to be super important for, for output and kind of energy transfer into the bat, into the ball. Um, so, you know, create that X factor first move and then bring it back together. On the right side, we see the looser mover. It's creating massive amount of stretch, um, is having more difficulty getting synced up at contact. Negative 13 isn't, isn't too bad. Um, but we do want to even get that closer to maybe negative 10. And it may be more difficult for that looser mover to, to bring these segments together just because there's so much going on in their swing. So if you can, you know, train that looser mover to create great X factor stretch, but then really corral that and bring it back together, super imperative for um, kind of having a controlled swing there. So if we look at the performance graph in the middle here, we can kind of start to look at you know, what this looks like um, through the arc of the swing. So we see at this first vertical line at heel strike, the player is, you know, relatively synced up. They're, um, you know, around zero degrees of separation. And then at first move, they do a great job of, you know, separating and creating some great X factor stretch, well-timed at, you know, fast velocity. And then they're able to bring that back together towards zero at contact. So you can just kind of see that, that dip, that power dip that we're seeing there where they create the X factor first move, but then really able to bring it back together at contact. So it's super, super important to not only look at the first move, but also at contact. Cool, and that leads us, you know, right into, um, the next, you know, the next segment we'll talk about here, which is reading the X factor performance graph. This is the same graph that we were just seeing on the uh, page before. And we'll look at a few other graphs that aren't as, you know, efficient or ideal as this one. But again, we're just looking at, you know, on the, on the Y axis on the left side here, this is, you know, degrees. So if we see this is a represented as a negative number, like I mentioned before, that's telling us that the torso is more internally rotated than the pelvis. And this player does a good job of prior to heel strike, keeping these synced up around zero. And then at heel strike, starting to get into that kind of rhythm and that load um, actually goes positive. So that's telling us that the pelvis is more internally rotated. But at first move, when you know he's, he's creating that maximum X factor stretch, you know, really dips down to negative 35, negative 36 degrees and is well-timed. 
um, and then able to bring that back up at contact. We'll look at a few other graphs, but you'll start to notice that the timing of this X factor is kind of can be all over the place. So it could be more towards heel strike. It could be right before contact. Um, what we've seen with the majority of really good hitters is they create this dip right around first move. Any questions or anything, Logan, pop up? Yeah, we have a couple. Um, you know, how would you guys classify tight versus loose movers, assuming separate mobility screening process? Uh, you know, if you want to take first dab at this one. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the, um, you know, the X factor numbers, um, I'd start to look at looser movers around, you know, negative, uh, you know, I'd say neutral is probably negative 15, negative 20. But once we get past that negative 20 mark, negative 20 to negative 40, um, starting more in the looser category, if we're just looking at the numbers um, and then really, you know, 12 to negative 12 to zero, um, probably more tighter there. Definitely. Uh, and one thing I, I want to add to that is just, you know, taking it as a uh, that section by section approach. You know, seeing sometimes you might see some looser moving in one section and not in another. Um, so we want to be careful not to classify, you know, every part of that person's body as a loose mover when sometimes it can be, you know, just a section. Uh, so it's something you just want to pay attention to when you're looking at the numbers. Absolutely. Yeah, no question. Player may be, you know, tighter in the, um, you know, shoulder, upper body region, but they can create a ton of, um, you know, internal and external rotation with the pelvis. So, so definitely something we want to key in on is, is looking at different areas of the body. Another one we have is a little bit about the game situation, and it might be interesting to look here. Um, you know, would negative 13 degrees at contact make it difficult for the hitter to hit inside pitches? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and, and it is very possible. Um, so we would look at, you know, obviously the pelvis and torso rotation at contact, which relates to these X factor numbers. And with velocity on the inner half, you know, you do want to be able to get that torso and pelvis synced up on time. So you can kind of catch that pitch where you need to. Um, but very likely that if the torso is lagging behind and if there is a ton of X factor stretch, um, you know, maybe these, these, uh, maybe the player was beat by velocity, maybe they were fooled, um, and they didn't really get their best swing off. So, so that is something we definitely want to look at is, um, you know, what is their X factor on different pitches, right? So maybe down the middle, they're, they're synced up, pelvis and torso are synced up, but on inside pitches, they're having trouble, um, you know, getting these two body segments to the correct place. Outside pitches, same thing. Um, so that's definitely an important thing that we want to key in on, especially when looking at uh, players at a high level, seeing high velocity and, you know, different pitch sets. No question. Cool. Cool. Those, those were great questions, though. Um, so now we're going to look at two other X Factor graphs here. And I think right off the bat, you'll start to notice a little bit um, of a difference between what we're seeing here and what we've seen on that ideal performance graph. So Immediately off the bat on this X factor graph on the left, you see that this player is starting kind of their rhythm even, um, you know, negatively uh, separated here. So they're at negative 20 degrees, even prior to getting to heel strike. So what this will force the player to do is, you know, create a ton of X factor stretch almost down to negative 52, which can be detrimental um, and really be mistimed and misaligned in the swing. So negative 20 degrees, we're staying at that. We never get towards zero or positive uh, with this number. So at heel strike, we're already kind of preloaded and set there. And then at first move or a little bit after, we get even more separated. So we get towards, you know, negative 50 degrees, which is a lot. And even with, you know, youth athletes, you may start to see these numbers towards, you know, negative 50. Um, and, and, you know, they're capable of doing that a lot of the time. But as they kind of develop and, you know, create some functional strength, we may want to shore these numbers up. And, you know, maybe they work well with that, that preset 
um, you know, separation that they're creating. Um, so something that we really want to key in on is what's happening before heel strike, um, that dip that we're seeing. And then as you can see here, they kind of accelerate to contact, but they don't really get close to zero. So due to being so separated, they're really having trouble getting uh, synced up at contact and they only get to that zero line, you know, a few frames after contact. So that is an energy loss there. And then on this graph on the right, you can see, you know, smaller numbers were only creating around negative 25 degrees of separation. But again, we see something similar here in which the player starts with this separation uh, prior to heel strike. And they actually do a good job of, you know, getting towards zero at contact. The one thing I do want to note on this one is the timing of that dip. So, you know, with these first two graphs, we can see that the dip is, is closer towards first move. Um, with this graph on the right, it is a little bit more towards the middle there, which, you know, maybe isn't a big problem because they are able to really get that sync back up at contact. Um, but if the player does have a ton of sequencing issues or timing hitting different pitches, it may be due to, you know, this X factor being mistimed and misaligned in the swing. Um, maybe they're, they're creating the X factor too late. And like the question that we received and Logan mentioned, they may struggle to get to that velocity on the inner half because of the late separation that they're creating. Um, so if we do start to run into those problems, maybe you look at these graphs and start to see when that timing is occurring. Two more graphs here. Um, we can see kind of on the left that kind of prototypical graph we're looking at. I do want to note that, you know, this player at heel strike is getting positive 20 um, or about there with uh, their X factor stretch. So again, that's telling us that the pelvis is more internally rotated than the torso. So they do a pretty good job of, you know, getting to that position and then still firing the pelvis independently while internally rotating the torso to get to first a good um, X factor range of around, you know, negative 35 or so around first move and then bring that up at contact. So this player seems to have really good independent control of these segments along with, with some good mobility possibly. Um, on the right here, we can see, you know, this one's kind of all over the place. So they start negative um, and then they really creep towards a positive number at heel strike. And then heel strike at first move kind of occur at a very similar time. And then they're creating some, some late X factor stretch. Um, so for this profile, this one's interesting because, you know, maybe due to their mobility, they can create more X factor stretch, but because of the inefficient movements that they're making around, you know, heel strike and first move, they're kind of limiting themselves. And then they have to catch back up to, to kind of get to a zero point of contact, which may be kind of, limiting some of that power that, that we could see from this player because of the mistimed um, and kind of inefficient patterns that they're creating with, with that dip. Cool, so that was just looking at a few of the X-Factor graphs. Again, if you have any questions, we kind of rolled through those. Um, please ask in the Q&A and we'll get to those for sure. Um, it's kind of a lot of information, but uh, super valuable. So I'm gonna play a short um, a video here on training X Factor and biofeedback. I mean, once we understand, you know, a player's X Factor and what they're doing in their swing, uh, how do we fix it, right? So how do we um, train this and use K Baseball to, to kind of train this metric? Um, again, ask questions if you need to, but I'm gonna go ahead and start this video on training X Factor and biofeedback. Okay, so as I mentioned before, there were two opportunities for improvement with this player's swing. The second characteristic that we noticed was that, you know, this player was not creating enough X factor stretch or separation in the swing. So separation is basically the difference in turn between the pelvis and torso rotation at any point in the swing. This number will vary from player to player based on their mobility and body type, but it is crucial metric for coiling energy in your body and then uncoiling that for, for maximum out power output. So we want to make sure that the, that this player is in the best position to succeed based on their mo uh, movement capabilities um, and their profile. Uh, so for this player profile, we found that they were a hypermobile athlete, but still weren't creating much X factor stretch in the swing. 
And, you know, many coaches like to see a player's maximum X factor around first move. So that's what we'll train uh, today about feedback. So I'm going to remove these. Um, and again, we'll be using a PVC pipe as an aid. The five foot pipe will be placed in the ground behind us uh, with both hands gripping it in an attack position. And as we create the separation, the PVC will, you know, start to bend and we can begin to feel our core start to really tighten and, and coil up. So we're back on the training builder screen now. Uh, you can see we have a blank slate to the right there. And, you know, after my swings, we've noticed that uh, my swings are the player swings that I'm working with. They were only creating around five degrees of separation at first move, which based on mobility was too low. So we're going to want to work on increasing that number. Uh, so we'll load up alignment and we're going to edit that and change the name again to, we'll do uh, X factor um, at first move. Uh, we'll edit the torso turn to negative 20 with a tolerance of three. So we'll make it difficult on the hitter here. And then we are going to uh, select pelvis turn and pelvis turn will be negative five with a tolerance of five. So right there, you can, you can really see that I'm trying to get, you know, myself or the player that, that we're working with to create separation um, that's around 15 degrees. Um, because, you know, that's the difference of the two metrics that I set there, and that's a parameter that we think this player um, is capable of doing and will be successful doing so. So we'll close this and we'll launch. So as you can see, this, this training aid really forced me to fire my pelvis independently of the torso uh, to create that separation. Um, you know, you can throw on the metrics to get a better visual of that and, you know, really start to, you know, create that separation and really feel that, that movement uh, that we're trying to train here. So here is a video of me actually training this drill. Cool. So you'd actually be surprised at, at how difficult that, that movement can be for some players. Um, you know, maybe they haven't even, haven't even done that in their career and they haven't even isolated those two segments. So using a PVC pipe is, a, is just kind of a really um, simple way to, to start training those patterns. And as you can see, very simple to set up a biofeedback program. Um, and, and I know a lot of us are still stuck at home, so you could do this in your living room. Um, um, training with, with maybe a player or, or, you know, training on yourself if you are a player and start to do these patterns with the PVC pipe and start to train that in biofeedback. Um, Logan, anything you want to add or any questions we received on the training piece of that? So no questions right now. Um, I know this is probably one of the, the most, you know, question topics that I think we get with, with people that we talk to. Um, I think the, the PVC pipe's a great way um, I'm a big fan of using med ball throws to do the same. Um, you know, this progression is, is probably the one that I use the most just because it gives the athlete a real feel of how to fire that first. And then that med ball kind of leads it to a little bit more of the swing. Um, I think the biggest thing for us to remember too, is for us to kind of do it, you know, for, for you guys that are using it as coaches out there, really putting yourself through this and, and kind of testing it will give you a really good idea of maybe what your players are feeling uh, and how to set it up more efficiently for them because you have an idea of what these ranges really feel like when you try and make that kind of separation, um, what it feels like to try and really force that 
Uh, we don't necessarily want to do that. That's why we say the assessment is so important to understand what our player is. We can't make everyone create an incredible amount of X factor. We just want to make sure that they're using their X factor the most efficiently that they can. Um, and then them gaining the X factor usually comes from improving mobility. You know, they, they become better overall movers. The whole body's healthier in itself. Um, so this is just a way for you to kind of train the sequencing, make it more efficient, but don't try and put everybody into one box. That's one of the biggest mistakes that you can make, no doubt. No question. No question. Yeah, and Logan was mentioned, there's a few different iterations to uh, this specific drill. So maybe it's a PVC pipe. Um, maybe it is the med ball drill um, where you're trying to work on, you know, strength control um, and really increasing the difficulty there. Maybe it's just as simple as using um, kind of a wall, uh, placing the player's hand there, and just creating some very simple patterns um, to see this X factor stretch um, coming into play. So a lot of different ways you can do this, but piggybacking off what Logan just said, I mean, it's super important to make sure you're not putting the player into positions that they can't do. Um, or if there's any pain, you know, maybe shutting the drill down and, and you know, getting them to the trainer, straight conditioning uh, to work on some of these patterns. Jake, one, one quick point I just want to throw out there to that too, why the biofeedback is, is so impactful to this is sometimes when we do it with just the PVC pipe but we don't have the numbers to give us the feedback during this training, we can kind of create a false sense of X factor by, you know, the players kind of rotating their shoulders a lot. So now with having the biofeedback, it really kind of creates the, the lane of the highway that we want our player to stay in. It allows them to change lanes to kind of feel the differences, but you know, we don't want them to cheat with this. So having the numbers is just massive to, to how we improve our athletes. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess, I mean, if you're just looking at this visually, it can be pretty easy to fool. Um, you know, maybe the pelvis is not, you know, independently separating at all and they're just kind of doing some movements with their shoulders. So like you just mentioned, Logan, incredible to have the numbers there and, and see exactly where they're at. Okay, so as I mentioned before. Cool, so kind of just two more simple drills we'll just show here. These are, um, you know, very common drills. So I'm sure many of the coaches on the call have seen these before. Um, but, but we found that these two can kind of relate to, um, you know, helping with X Factor, whether it's to create that pattern in the first place or, um, you know, creating less or more, depending on what you want to do. So the step back drill, super simple, just trying to create some rhythm. And what it can do is kind of, you know, force that player into, you know, getting out of that static, you know, position that they're in when they hit and, you know, maybe start to create some athleticism and that can kind of influence the X factor. So uh, step back's a great one. Walk up drill is gonna be pretty similar in that we're just trying to put the player in a position to, to move, to feel comfortable, um, because a lot of times that can open up the um, you know, separation they're creating. Great. So like I said, both very simple drills. Sure, you've seen them before, but uh, we found that they're great for X Factor and uh, that metric alone. Um, any questions or things you want to add, Logan? So when we had, if you have a hitter that is uh, positive 25 to 35 degrees of contact, how would you train them to clean this up? Um, and feel free to put this in the, in the chat for, for whoever asked this. Um, you know, maybe kind of thinking maybe more at uh, heel strike with the 25 to 35 when Jake was talking about it earlier. Um, how the pelvis can actually get in front of the torso and the counter rotation. You know, from your experience, do you see that as a negative thing? Does that happen a lot? How would you, you know, maybe fix that? Does it need to be fixed? Right. Um, yeah, like you just kind of said, you might need to look back into the swing and the pattern they're creating at heel strike um, and first move. Um, so, yeah, if it is, you know, a positive number at contact, that's telling us that, uh, the, the pelvis is still internally rotated while the torso is kind of going out to meet the ball. 
Um, and with the nature of hitting and kind of the, the, the variance of, of hitting a baseball, that'll happen, right? Because uh, sometimes a player just needs to get their hands on the ball or their bat on the ball, uh, depending on the pitch. So maybe their torso just kind of sneaks out um, and, and is creating that high X factor number. But what that's going to do is that's going to kind of limit power because the pelvis is kind of inactive. The lower half um, is, is not really contributing to the energy of the swing. Um, and it's really an upper body dominated swing and an upper body dominated swing at contact. Um, so if we're looking to train that, I think we would want to try to, to closen up that number um, more towards zero if their mobility allows them to. Um, it could very well be a case of the pelvis not being able to rotate, um, you know, to that, to that contact number. So we'd want to make sure that that's taken care of first, look at strength training, um, different things like that. But if it is mechanical, um, look to see what they're doing in heel strike and first move. And then again, biofeedback um, and a couple of these drills are a good way to see the exact number um, and if they're improving there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's an important thing to, to note too. I mean, 25 to 35 degrees of positive X factor hit, hit contact is going to be uh, incredibly hard. So if anyone comes across that, I would love to see it and see that swing. Um, but it definitely would be possible to see the torso get in front of the pelvis at that contact, but it definitely wouldn't, wouldn't be that big. And it goes right back to the PVC drill, getting the hips out in front of the torso and how important that is in the sequencing. No question. Yeah, we'd be interested to look at that player's, um, you know, kinematic sequence graph and their and the sequence that they're creating. Just to uh, just twenty five, like Logan said, is a lot. Um, so we'd be interested to look at some of those metrics. Cool. We'll give everybody, you know, a few more minutes to ask any questions that they want. Um, the one thing I will add is if. Uh, you do want to learn more about this, um, you know, X Factor or really anything with K Baseball. We have our online certification with Justin Stone that is, you know, incredible to start to understand, you know, how do you implement this into player development? And then, you know, Logan, myself, we're always kind of here to answer these questions. So feel free to reach out to us um, about anything the K Baseball software, or maybe just questions you have if you don't own a system. Um, we're all always here to help for that. Um, and I know I mentioned, you know, mobility screens a few times through this. Um, you know, we are both, you know, TPI certified um, on base U. So make sure to check out some of the webinars that they're doing because those are incredible for understanding, you know, how to train your players and work with them. Um, but if we don't have any questions, Logan, finish up if you want. Yeah, just one real quick one. Um, you know, will youth players have higher X factors than adults? Yeah, that's a, um, we kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, we will see, you know, looser player or younger athletes tend to be more um, hypermobile athletes. So we will start to see those, you know, extreme X factor numbers up towards negative 50, even negative 60 sometimes. And what a lot of times will happen is they'll have struggles to kind of corral those and connect those throughout the swing. Uh, because they lack some of that functional strength. Uh, so they will create more consistently, I'd say. Uh, not all the time, uh, but uh, something we'll look for there uh, because they are, you know, kind of extremely hypermobile and they're still developing that functional strength. So we just look to, you know, make sure that's controlled and make sure the mechanics are in place uh, to create a good efficient sequence. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you, you hit the nail on the head with that one. And um, like Jake said, just reiterating, you know, if you guys need anything, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you know, it's what we're here for and, you know, leave it open if there's any last minute questions and let Jake wrap it up from here. Appreciate you guys taking the time to join us today. Uh, it's been really good. Some great questions and, uh, something I know we look forward to, to jumping on with you guys. Absolutely. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave this open for, you know, three or four more minutes. We'll just stick around. Um, but again, if you need to hop off, thank you again for joining us. And um, we'll, be, we'll be in touch about our next webinar. Um, and uh, we appreciate your guys' time today. So thank you. Got one here for you, Jake. If a player's upper body gets out in front of the lower body, 
and the swing is more of an upper body swing, what are the injury risks to that player? Yeah, um, so we've seen before that if a player isn't capable of creating some of these X factor numbers and they're, you know, inconsistent where they're creating a ton of positive and then going back negative, we've seen some lower back injuries actually with those players um, or, you know, some pain in the lower back. Um, so I think that'd be more, you know, geared towards the, the trainers, doctors, strength conditioning staff. Um, if the player is having lower back injury to make sure to kind of send them over there, but you as the coach can start to understand, you know, where, what this looks like in their swing. If they are creating some of that positive torso rotation um, and it's kind of misaligned and it's happening quickly, that could be a cause for that. So something to look for. Absolutely. Cool. And I always think it's interesting. I mean, you know, the biggest thing with that too is always get the assessment, you know, make sure – refer to the PTs, kind of create that team around you to make sure that you're kind of covering all your bases with, with your training. Absolutely. Nothing else right now. Cool. Cool. So we'll go ahead and end this, but thanks again, everybody. Uh, we appreciate your time. Um, and uh, we're going to sign off. Thank you. See you guys. Take care.